Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Got my good friend Phil here. I told you, we're back to doom. Things are not okay. Stay tuned. Trade Genius. Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Usually I do fun ads, I talk about our service, but I wanna be serious with you for a second. We've been helping a lot of people trading for a long time. As you can see here, I wanna let them do the talking for me for a change. But most importantly, we wanna help you too. If you've not joined our service yet, come check us out, tradelikeagenius.com. Full service, you know, we have chat room, we have the algorithms for you, we give trades out every day, we educate you. So go to tradelikeagenius.com, check us out. What you get out of our service, is much, much more than what you put into it. And we'd like to see you in the room. Thanks for listening. Okay, Phil, you and I have been seeing this for a, a long time. We know this anecdotally. We're seeing it in the data. Why don't you take people through this? Because I think this is the chart that politicians and policymakers should share the most. Absolutely. If we look, let's just explain it here real quick, right? So if we look at the chart, uh, what you're going to see is that it's showing us that only 72% of Americans are reporting to be financially stable. Relatively speaking, this is going back to levels that we were at at 2016. If we were looking at things from the great financial crisis on, this number was on a steady increase from that time. And you'll see it in the chart that we're going to show. But, you know, you think, well, markets are screaming higher. You know, the S&P 500 just made a new all-time high. You would think the underlying economy would be following along, but that isn't really the case. In fact, the decline here, and you can see it visually on this chart, we'll bring it up, is starting to be a little more pronounced. And so, again, it's one other data point, Bob, where where we have alligator jaws, right? Where the markets just detach from reality, you know, it's puffing on its own smoke, but what should be driving fundamentals and driving the markets higher just really isn't there. So this is why I think that you can be, you know, we talk about, you wanna be trading with the market, not ahead of the market, because like in this situation, if you're, if you're trying to get a position bearishly because you think the market's gonna end up reflecting the fundamentals, you might be in a world of hurt because of the way that the derivatives and the positioning is because markets are kind of like quarter to quarter, right? And how they position. So you could have all this hedging uh, going in the summertime, actually propping up the market until which time we see like the fundamentals actually starting to break the market down. But that can persist. That's why they say markets can be irrational longer than you can be solvent. So it's a data point that while it, I don't like it, I don't think it's going to end well. It doesn't mean we're going to sell tomorrow, but it does mean that I think uh, Q4 is going to be a bit of a concern. I think it's going to take that long for this stuff to manifest, Bob. Yeah. And look, and we talked about it yesterday that, you know, when you go into summertime, you have low volume. And when you have low volume, you have low volatility. When you have low volatility, you have higher risk on events. And so stocks that are that people are leaning heavily short on or hedging aggressively, they're the ones that actually, you know, it's ironic. They're the ones that actually go up the most because they force people out of the trade to release that, that leverage that's in the system. And I think that's what's going to happen. And then the whole market will, will settle back down. That's why I'm I'm really negative for August because in the summertime nobody's really paying attention unless there's an event. You know we're gonna we're gonna we'll, we'll remain elevated. But come August, right after August OPEX, we usually have Jackson Hole. Right after Jackson Hole, we go right into the election season, and I think that those things are prime for volatility. We see it in the VIX charts too. You get major spikes in the fall, and that means that your people start being positioned bearishly. That'll actually get paid then. But from a human standpoint, standpoint, Phil, this is not good. And, you know, we see it all around us now. I live in an area where you can't lose your job and survive. Okay. And there was other charts out there this morning, guys were putting in the room, you know, the top five metro areas in the United States, it requires $270,000 to have a meaningful life, not an overabundant life, but not a hand to mouth life. And that's just insane. Especially if you think about it, if you make it $270,000 a year, you know, you're, you're only taking home about 150 to 160,000. People don't quite get that. And then, you know, when you're running mortgages that are probably eight to 10,000, maybe 10,000, 12,000 with PITI, you know, what's left, you know, 30, 40 grand to live on, you know, when you have private school, you have car payments, you have living expenses, you have vacations, it doesn't take much to eat into that 
people forget, you know, you know, when you're at that level, you know, you're giving away probably 30% of your 35% of your income to federal and state taxes. So it's becoming such a burden. And I'll give one more antidote. You know, my daughter is in a business where she sees a lot of people and a lot of walks of life. And more and more people now are starting to extend out their visits to her and are also cutting back on what they're doing. And they're also actually vocalizing fears about their future. And I thought that was really interesting. I told her this to, hey, the kid let me go because for the first time ever, she said, dad, I got to be really careful here over the next couple months just to make sure I could pay all my bills. Because, you know, for her, you know, she has to pay rent, you know, for what where she works. She has to pay rent for where she lives. And then she has to pay taxes as a self-employed person. And at the end, you know, she looks at it and she goes, he goes, well, I hope I like Top Raymond, you know? So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of that environment. And I think a lot of people are probably in that camp, Phil. I would totally agree. I think that's ultimately, like I said, it will start to matter at some point, but not right now. Uh, right now we're going to have basically market blow off. And the only reason why I would change my mind on that is if we really started to see like a couple of weeks where we're trading like say under the weekly nine EMA right before our time frame that we're looking for. But you, you know, the way these markets work, it's kind of laid out for you, right? Uh, unless there's a major what would probably qualify as a black swan event, which, you know, can happen, right? And the, the problem here is that if you do get any kind of crack in a dam like that, it's going to get exasperated because we're already pretty weak under the hood. So that could come early certainly could but if it does not the way the markets are set up that seasonally into summer you're really not going to see much of a deterioration like bob said when it's low volatility things tend to grind and grind higher even though you know the average person is not doing well could be facing job losses and keep in mind too this market is looking for a weak job market to prop up the prices of the market, right? Because those bets are going to actually get cashed in. We saw that today. The market uh, job jobless claims was actually down. Market didn't like that. You would think, why not, right? Because, you know, jobs are looking strong. But that's the problem is because they're looking for Fed easing. So the algos right now, which drive majority of what's going on in the market, are basically given a set of rules to abide by. And right now they're looking for reasons to either be bearish the market with reasons for the Fed to be hawkish. So that means strong strong jobs data and sticky inflation. And that's what we got today too with the PMI numbers with sticky inflation, which is no surprise. I mean, if you've been listening to us, that's going to be a problem. And most likely you're going to be told to get used to 3% inflation at some point, but that's what's driving the market short term. So th the other thing too, though, is that these are all knee jerk reactions. So the market's down, Nvidia's up, right? But it's kind of standing by itself, market's down. But I wouldn't be surprised though, if we see the market kind of eat back this initial knee jerk reaction. And then also in the crypto land, we have a theory and its ETF being announced later today, most likely. Most are thinking that we're going to get an approval based on what the SEC has been kind of telegraphing. It's been a 180 from them. So if that gets approved, we may see a little pop momentarily in crypto. And then we'll have to see if they sell it like they did Bitcoin initially, where you get a pullback after the initial pop. So we'll see. But we are in that post OPEX window of weakness. Even that being said, and, and though we've had a pullback from yesterday and then off the NVIDIA earnings overall, the market really hasn't dropped a lot, Bob. We haven't even gotten down to the daily nine EMA. So usually when you get post OPEX weakness, you're below something like the daily nine EMA moving average. That's not really asking a lot from the bears. They can't even get that done. So as gloomy as you might hear from some people today, the way the market feels, it's really not. And unless we start really selling off from here over the next week or two, I don't think the bears have a lot to stand on here, Bob. And I think ultimately this market is going to rebound and buck the underlying fundamentals, uh, at least until August. Yeah. And one, one final comment too. So the quants tell us, you know, the in normal thing is you want to buy low and sell high, right? But when you come to volatility indexes, just like sometimes when like NVIDIA, when something blowing off you buy higher and sell higher right so it works volatility in reverse sometimes when volatility gets low you get this reflexive move yeah where where um you act, you're actually shorting it into lower levels we saw that remember a couple of years ago when oil went negative yep that that's what's called a reflexive move where everybody has to chase the market down right. uh, to protect the position. Well, that's the same thing. Volatility. They said a big mistake a lot of traders make is, hey, VIX is down at 10 or 11, 11, 12, 13. It's time to go long. But this is where you get the final push down. You know what we, you and I used to call the the scared the children move.
move where, mm-hmm. where, where it breaks a low. And that's what you need to expect this summer. And like I said, unless there's some sort of black swan event or geopolitical event that changes things, the normal course of action is going to be they're going to press volatility lower. And it's going to be really frustrating because all the things that you hate to go up is going to go up. And all the things you think should go up are going to be stagnant. And and that's that's just how it is. And you just have the muscle through it. And we've been preaching that a lot today in the room because people uh, they I think people just want things to happen immediately. And that's just not how uh, life and trading works. So with that, we yacked at you guys enough. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Check out our service. Check out what we do. We, we're doing, I believe, humble brag, a really good job. Check out our results. We think we have this thing wired for the moment. And we think we can put you guys in the best possible place to win. So uh, uh, check out tradelikeagenius.com or tradegenius.co and keep liking the podcast. Tell your friends about it and we'll try to give you guys more and better content going forward. See you guys on the next video. Take care. Trade Genius.